how's it going everyone? Yep, I'm going to do something a little different today. Uh, we're going to put together a Playfield rotisserie for under 200 bucks in this episode. I'm sure everybody, you know, there's enough of them, enough uh, videos out there of how to do this, but uh, I figured, uh, what the hell, I'm going to do it. I might as well record it, make a video of it, and and put it up see if anybody wants to watch me build my own play field rotisserie like I said this one's uh, gonna be under a hundred under two hundred dollars uh, let's see and a little update on the on the building for the arcade um, let's see this week I don't know when I'm gonna post this but uh, this is the going into the third week of January and uh, we got all the money for it so we're gonna be probably closing on it within the next next couple of weeks and we'll have possession of the building and you'll start seeing uh, some videos from over there at the uh, arcade getting it ready and that way I can get stuff out of here and I won't be so jammed up in here and I'll actually have a little bit more room to work on a few things. <laughs> uh, right now we're kind of, oh I have six, six pinball machines that are, six? Yeah, six that are ready, ready to go over. Uh, a couple of arcade videos uh, and our entertainer gumball. Uh, machine over there it's ready to go over and I have uh, well let's see one two I have five more pinball machines in at the store that's ready to go to go down there's uh, one two two videos and uh, crane uh, action claw that's ready to go and go over and in the storage unit, I have, there's two pinball machines in the uh, storage unit that's uh, ready to go. And I think one other video game I took out to the, it's been a while since I've been over there. I've had enough stuff to, to do here in the garage that I haven't been over, even over to the storage unit. Um, so I, I don't remember what the hell is in there. I know some of the stuff that's in there, a few things. But when I get in there, it's going to be, oh, jeez, I forgot I even had that. <laughs> you know, there's a couple dart machines over there that uh, i got to go through. Uh, there's, oh, three or four video games over there to go through. There's three more pinball machines over there to go through. Uh, three of the... Two of them are the better ones that I, I really like, and the other one's kind of is an, another one that's kind of popular. One EM and two solid states over there to go through. Uh, I have my CD jukebox sitting back here in the corner that um, that I need to. That'll be coming up after I'm doing the one I'm doing now. <laughs> Uh, and the one sitting right here, that's the Chicago coin that I, I need a lot of parts for. And nobody has, I haven't been able to find anything for the Chicago coin. Biggest thing I need for it is uh, the score motor. Uh, if I had the score motor, I could start working on it and get it ready. The, the relays and the other stuff that's missing, I can make up the relays. Uh, there's a few other Chicago coins that are close enough that I can uh, put them together and make a make a relay for that. But it's the the score motor is the hardest part to find for it. It's a shame. Uh, I had to use the apron off of it uh, for for another one that's coming up next after. Night Rider. When I finish up Night Rider, then we'll be getting into a Chicago Coin EM. Uh, uh, that one, I, like I said, I had to steal the apron off of this one back here to put on that because I was missing an apron. Apron, 
uh, apron's not a big deal. I can. It doesn't have to be a Chicago coin. It can be a uh, classic Stern. After Stern took over, they they kind of kept a lot of the parts for a while, and the apron was one of them. If I find an, a class classic Stern, it'll go on my uh, apron. It'll go on my Chicago coin. And lockdown bar is pretty much the same. Uh, they, I, I'm not sure if the classic Sterns have the same lockdown bar, but uh, the older Gottlieb's have a, have the same lockdown bar. Only Gottlieb's are a little, a little wider, I think. It's either the Gottlieb's are wider or narrower. No, the Chicago coins are narrower. But it's the same setup. If I can locate a, a Gottlieb, it'll be a little wider and it may cover just a hair of the apron. But I can I can use it. You know, so that's not the problem. It's the score motor is the problem uh, for the Chicago coin. It's a seventy-five. So if anybody knows anybody that has a Chicago coin that they're parting out or has some Chicago coin parts, I need a score motor. I need the whole pancake all the cams, uh, motor I can get new, but I need all the the cams, the pancake style. Um, like I said, I have nothing. They cut it out of it. And it's a, it, you know, it, it's a really a rough machine, but I think we could uh, uh, actually make it look like something. But anyway, yep, so we'll be getting into the arcade here pretty soon and we're going to start, I'll start making some videos over there of getting it ready. And, but in this video, we're going to put together a Playfield Rotisserie for under 200 bucks. So let's get started and get this done because I got other stuff to do. All right, we'll start out. This is I bought a went to Harbor Freight, bought a Warrior Universal folding miter saw stand. Uh, it they're pretty heavy, collapsible, which uh, duh, the most of them are, so you can take them from job to job. But it it's pretty sturdy. It's not a wimpy one. Uh, that's what, you know, it was like I said, it was 49. I had seen a few other ones elsewhere that were like 39, or and this one is a 350 pound capacity universal quick release mounting brackets, uh, which we don't need. Uh, there's let's see, you get the stand itself. These are the quick release uh, brackets for your miter saw. You want to keep them around in case you ever want to mount your miter saw on it. And the rollers, which we don't need the rollers either. So actually, if you could just buy the, the stand itself with the two, two arms on it, it would be ideal. But it's a miter stand, so it's going to come with everything. I said the uh, Miter stand, $49.99. Uh, and then we're going to need two stool swivels. Not stool sample, but stool swivels to mount our plates on, or our brackets for our play field. Uh, uh, these were $26.99 Amazon. Uh, there, there was a couple of them on there for twenty-one ninety-nine. It just it was going to take a couple of weeks for the for them to come in, and uh, I already had everything sitting here except those, so I just went ahead and spent the extra five bucks and got them in. Uh, bag of hardware. Uh, going to do something a little different than everybody else, I think. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody, but anyway. Uh, let's see, and let's see the hardware. I got a five foot piece of angle. Got this at the hardware store. And two three foot pieces of one inch square tubing. 
the hardware and the angle iron and the square tubing was 60 bucks. Uh, these are like $14.99 a piece. You could probably find them cheaper if you go to an actual metal place. Same with the angle iron. You know, you could probably get this stuff a, a lot cheaper than going to the hardware store. But, you know, I don't have a, a metal place that's close by. I have to drive like 30, 35 miles to, to get this at a metal distributor, I guess you call it. Uh, but the hardware store had it, so that's where I get it. Got it at the hardware store. Same with our our butts and nolts and a uh, couple of clips there. I'll show you what we're going to do with those then. Clamps. Uh, I'm, a couple different ways that you can go with clamps on this. You can use 2-inch C-clamps which are always going to be lying around and kicked around and then you have to go find them. Uh, we may still have to use these. Uh, you can use uh, pistol clamps uh, which is a good option but I'm just not a real f fan of this being sticking up above your uh, play field all the time while you're trying to work. Uh, these are probably a little too small, but uh, I needed some small ones, so I got I just picked those up. These one, these are 99 cents a piece at Harbor Freight. The C clamps were uh, three, three nineteen, or two nineteen, somewhere in there. And this is the style that I want to use. I want to mount these on there so I can just clamp the play field down and not have to worry about this sticking up in the air or the C-clamps that you, every time you're not using it the C-clamps are off somewhere because you used them elsewhere you mount this permanent <laughs> and they'll always be there these were like five dollars and I think five ninety nine or 529 something like that anyway I have roughly 20 about $22 in those so uh, you know depending on what route you want to go that's up to you so with the you know you have 50 60 to 110 20 130 and we'll just say 30 because there's a few things tax you know and all that so what were 30 160 dollars uh yeah so uh you yeah, know that's not too bad uh, i don't know what they sell for online because i wasn't interested in buying one online one that was already done i was just gonna make one up that i i wanna that I like and that way I can fold it up and put it in a corner when it's not in use. So we're gonna, what are we gonna need? We're gonna need, you can either use a drill press or a regular drill. I don't have a drill press so we'll be using regular cordless drill to drill our holes. Uh, you can use a electric bandsaw or whatever to cut your uh, angle iron but I don't so we'll be using my cordless saber to cut the cut that down so hopefully by the end of this video we have a working playfield rotisserie now the first thing we need to do is we need two 20 inch pieces of angle iron most playfields are just a little bit over 20 20 inches um, even, you know, even if you're putting on a, a wide body, you know, if you have your clamps in the right place, you can clamp it down. You're only going to be a little over. Uh, I, I'm going to do it just, the play field that I'm kind of looking at right at the moment is a little over 20 inches. So if we do it at 20 inches, we won't have anything sticking out on either side to get caught on. 
the uh, first thing we got to do is we need two 20 inch pieces of angle See how good I can cut this. Uh -huh. Let's move that down a little bit. If I go the other way, see if I can get these both the same, with the holes all in the same place. Hmm. Well, a little different. I guess it doesn't matter which way we do it. Kind of hoping to make it make each one exactly the same. Twenties, we have uh, under twenty left, which I have an idea we're going to be using this. Right. Now we want to mount our bar stool. get this pretty pretty close to center. So we're gonna mark this center. Looky there, we don't even have to 
grow any holes. All right, I'm using carriage bolts. Uh, I got quarter inch carriage bolts. Uh, I think I could have went with a little bigger. But, and I will, these were the shortest ones that they had. So I'm going to have to cut them off because I don't want it sticking out into the play field that far. It's not going to give us enough, enough room to... set our play field down on it. And also go the other way, which might be a let's ah. okay let's see what kind of room. See our problem is is our room in between here. If you have bolts sticking up in here, you're not going to be able to move your... That one's already bent. <laughs> anyway, looking at that, you know, I think, I think we'll go down through with the carriage bolts and then I can cut the, cut the head off, or cut the stud off here. I like that better. That's a better plan. Ace, just put that on finger tight. down through. That way it'll give us all the room we need to mount our play field. And we're not going to be hitting our play field on the end of a end of a bolt. Which can't be good. I bought the carriage bolts because I, I didn't. I watched some other videos of other people build them, and I always had that bolt sticking out through to the play field or even the head. That's better. Alright, I'll get this one tightened up and I'll get the other one done and then we'll move on to our uh, stanchions that come up in, that go up in our our miter stand.
got those two done. Now we have to put them on our uprights. just gonna come down a little bit so it's not sticking up past the, the stanchion and let's see I'm gonna put one these will never have to should never have to move these Marks. Let's see. Grill motor. Grill motor. And now we need some hole punchers for the grill motor. Okay, a quarter inch is what our bolts are. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll punch them quarter. Like I said, if you have a drill press, it'd be a lot easier. See if it's going to walk around on me. Nope.
All right, now we got our uprights done. Now we can get our miter stand out here. Okay. Now here's where our stanchions are going to go in here. You can either have them on the inside. No, or see on here it says max max working length. So I'm figuring those go on the inside so you can kind of read it. to write down in those. Like so. Now you can see where it's going to be kind of a a pain if you use these thumb screws, these these guys in here. You know, you can set your height with those. Now, is that going to uh, tighten up that? Now, is that going to be is that going to be enough for the weight of a play field, which feels like it is? Uh, I had an idea with those clips. I may with those hitch pin clips. I don't know if I, you know, it. They're stiff, but. I still think if you're going to try and work on something, you're going to have to going to have to figure out a lock so we can lock lock them together. So it, once you get it in a position that you like, you can lock it and work on it. Now that's as wide as a play field is, and coming up would be enough. You now so you can turn it around. <clears throat> you want to be able to, to spin the you want to be able to spin this. But now it's the the length is what I'm kind of curious about. You know play field the one I'm working on over here is 42 inches. This is 32 inches, so you know you need to open this up five inches on either side. So here, here's what I'm thinking. Okay, where are we at? One and an eighth. And we want about six and a quarter there. Same thing, about six and a quarter. Right. 
I don't think we're going to, you don't really have to worry too much about it being collapsed in on you. It's the height that it's going to end up, I think it's going to end up scooting down over time. But I'd like to... Okay, here's what I'm thinking, folks. Um, if you fold this up, you know, and put it away, so it's out of your way if you're not going to be using it for a while, which, you know, that's what I'll be doing. Now, every time you set this up, do you want to come through and have to measure, you know, measure out so you can get your right length for your play field? Or how about your height? You want to uh, have to keep a measure in to get your right height? What I'm thinking here is I'm just going to, I'm going to drill a hole down through, all the way through on both of these. That's pretty heavy, but we'll get a hole drilled down through it. And that way I can just drop a bolt down through it. And then when I take it apart, you know, to put it away, when I set it back up, all I have to do is slide this back into that hole, drop drop the bolt in either side and we're at the right length. Same with the height. The height I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to drill a hole through here all the way through to the other side and I'm just going to slide a bolt through it. That way same thing. I could just set my set the riser down in, stick a bolt in it and you're at the right height. I have it set at 12 inches. Play field 20 20 inches if you get it centered that's 10 inches 10 inch swing uh, you want a little bit left underneath of it so when it if you have critters hanging off of the bottom drop targets and you know and stuff like that you want to make sure it's gonna when it swings around it's gonna clear now the other problem I have with this is yes these are stiff but they're not stiff enough you put your play field up on there and you're, you're working and you lean on it you're just gonna you know you're gonna keep fighting with it keep pulling it back up and then fighting with it so that's where these come in I'm gonna drill a hole through both plates and then I can slide that through and it'll lock it somewhat in position. It'll still be a little, you know, it'll still move a little bit, but it, it's not going to flip around on you. And then what I'll do is I'll spin our table around here and I'll put another hole here on this side. So when we flip it over, we can put the pin in it here while it's upside down and that kind of holds it in place. I'll do the same with this side because I know if you do one side, this side you're going to end up trying to twist, twist the play field. You're working down here, that side's secure, this, this side's going to want to go down, you're going to twist the play field and, and that's not going to be good either. So I'll do the same with that one, that way we'll have two of these pins, one on either side, holding it in position and we'll have a bolt through to hold it at our right height and a bolt down through to hold it at our right length alright so that's my plan and I'm sticking to it and I forgot to mention I have the length set at 42 and a half um, the playing fields I keep measuring are all 42 and I'd, I would like to have at least a quarter inch on either side, you know, for a little bit of play. So you're not actually... I'm going to get different, I want to get some clips, 
I haven't decided whether to get four more of these because see you can these would work out good just push that down through and then you can lock it on the other side and that would hold it or you can just leave it lay like so or put a bolt through it that way every time you you set it up you're gonna hit the exact spot that you need every time all right I'll get the other one drilled and then we'll work on the on our stanchion part Obviously on this one you know uh, I couldn't use the other clamps I'm gonna have to use the C-clamps to to button these down um, now this is a Chicago coin play field nasty one and it has the dials out on the end that fit down in the cabinet uh, in order to work it we'll, we'll have to take those two off so we can clamp it down clamp it and here on this this side see you run into the ball kick out assembly because this one's right up against the back of the play or the end of the play field uh, this one, what we'd have to do is put blocks, shim under either side in order for it to uh, be able to clamp it down. You know, this is going to work for some play fields that you can, that you can just set up on here and work with is what I'm looking at and seeing right now. But uh, I get into some funky ones like the Chicago coins I'll have to take some parts off of the back bottom side in order to get it set up on here and mounted where it should be okay okay I don't know where I left off my card was full but um like I was saying on these on some of these play fields you're gonna have to take some stuff off the bottom in order for them to sit down on your angle iron so you can clamp it down clamp it clamp it and this side will have to shim this end we just have to take those dials off 
and there's another hook down here for the play field we'd have to take that off to in order for to actually sit on this and work and it is I didn't take into consideration that you know we're not quite centered with our uprights because uh, you know they're on either side so we're off about oh about an inch or so and you can see to get it up on there square you're going to be a little off a little bit on one side you can square it up on one end the other end it will just be off a little bit that's just going to be the way it is but yeah this, like I said this is a Chicago coin play field so you know there's some uh, some stuff on the ends of the Chicago coins now some of them have absolutely nothing underneath on either end and the ball ball kick that uh, ball kick out isn't right out there on the end of the play field so it, you know it's going to work for some and other ones you're just going to have to do a little modifying and shimming in order for it to work to work on it work on this which is fine I mean for 160 bucks you can't go wrong I mean it's going to work out good you can pull a play field up out set it up on here and work on it when you when you have the stuff or when you need to and you can still work on the cabinet if you're working on a cabinet now the basic stuff uh, that you know a few things that I do on the bottom side of some of these uh, it's easier just for me to flip them over in the play, in the cabinet do my work and then flip it back over but when I'm really working on a play field and refinishing a whole play field I'd like to get it up on here because there's a lot of stuff uh, you know like when I'm steel wooling down the play field and cleaning and everything it, it still goes down inside the cabinet and you still have to clean the inside of the cabinet when you're done to make sure you get all that done with it sitting on that on here it just falls on the floor and you sweep it up you're not making a mess on the inside of your your cabinet So that's that's our hundred and sixty dollar playfield rotisserie. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I really hope to see you on the next one. Until then, see ya.